Let us try an example to design the bending moment for a steel member. The question asks us to calculate the bending moment resistance of a section. The section is welded eye section. The steel grade is 275. The flame is 200 mm times 20 mm. The web is 600 times 6 mm. The welded size is 6 mm and it is assumed that the member is fully lateral restrained. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve the questions, first you need to determine the section property and the dimension. You will need those informations for the following steps. First, you need to determine the FY. The steel grade is 275. The thickness of the flank and the web is 20 and 6 mm respectively. Both of them are less than 40 mm. And in accordance to table 3.1 in Euro code, the FY will be equal to 275. The epsilon is computed based on this formula and which is equal to 0 0.92. Next, you need to determine the classification. Refer to table 5.2 in Eurocode 3. The graphical representations are given here. Determine the relevance C for the web and the flange and the T for the web and the flange. Compute the actual C per T ratio of the web and the flange, which is 91.3 and 4.55. Check the limit from class 1, class 2 and class 3 and so on. To determine their classifications. For class 3, the C per T limit is 125 epsilon, which is equal to 144.6. The actual C per T ratio is less than 144, therefore it is considered class 3. This number is actually greater than class 2. Thus, it is not considered as task class 2. For class 1, the C per T limit is equal to 9 epsilon, which is equal to 8.34. This number is greater than the actual C per T ratio, therefore it is considered as class 1. The cross section is considered as class 3 due to the more critical class among the two. Based on clause 6.2.2.4, when the web is equal to class 3 and when the flank is equal to class 1, the section can be classified as an effective class to cross section. The relevant clause and the statements are given here. With that, there will be a region on ineffective section, which is the leftover by minusing 20 epsilon T width and 20 epsilon T width plus another two times the 20 epsilon T web. This region is assumed not contributing to any bending resistance of the member. With that, you need to determine an effective neutral axis as represented by the Z. From the diagram here, the Z is calculated by minusing the entire height H minus a thickness of the flank 
minus the thickness of the weld and minus 2 times the 20 epsilon T web. The Z for this example is 352.1 mm. Next, you need to determine the plastic modulus of the effective section where the ineffective sections are ignored. To determine the moment resistance of a member, you need to multiply the force and the lever arm. The force is computed by multiplying the stress and the area and the lever arm will be referring to the dimensions of the member. Section modulus is actually a function of the area times the lever arm. Therefore, in order to compute the effective section modulus, you are to multiply the respective area and their lever arms. It is assumed that the flank is not affected by the ineffective section. However, the web will be affected by ineffective section. With that, the section modulus of the flank is determined by the area times the lever arm. Or you may imagine that the neutral axis is not affected by the ineffective area and the section modulus of the flank is done by multiplying the area times the distance and the another area times the distance. The section modulus of the flange is given by these equations. The area is the width of the flange times the thickness of the flange. As for the lever arm, it is represented by the overall height minus half of the thickness of the flank and minus another half of the thickness of the flank. Next, you need to work out the, the other section modulus. There will be three parts of the web. A1 and A2 is above the neutral axis and A4 is below neutral axis. The section modulus will be A1 multiply Z2 and A3 multiply Z3 and A4 multiply Z4. The equations for those are given here. The A2 is determined by the height of this plus S multiply the thickness. The Z2 is determined by the Z multiply the thickness of the flank multiply half of the A2. A3 is obtained by 20 epsilon TW, which is the height of this, multiply the width of the flank. Its lever arm is actually half of its height of 20 epsilon T web. A4 is taken as the overall height H minus the thickness of the flank minus Z. The lever arm refers to its centroid to the neutral axis. Substitute all the value into the equations. You will get the plastic modulus of the effective sections equals to 2706682 mm the bending resistance of the cross sections it will be equals to 
section modulus time fy divided by factor of safety which is equals to 743.8 kilonewton meter since that we discuss about the plastic section modulus the plastic section modulus of a typical sections is given below it can be obtained through the calculations or obtained from the table of properties. The easiest way is to obtain the value from the table of property. For your understanding, the plastic section modulus is calculated as follow. Again, the moment resistance is actually calculated by the force times its lever arm. And the force can be break down into the stress and the area of the sections times the lever arm. And the section modulus represent a function of the areas times lever arm. To get the section modulus, you are to multiply this A1 with Z1 plus A2 with Z2 and then plus A3 with Z3 and then plus A4 and Z4. The equations are obtained geometrically based on the dimension outlined here and it is assumed that the neutral axis is at the mid of the section.